Hey everyone, it's Dante and I'm so excited to be here to present to you all about the cardiovascular system as it relates to fitness and wellness. So just getting started here, what are we talking about when we say cardiovascular system? Cardio refers to the heart specifically and vascular refers to our intravenous system. So all the major arteries are included in this as well as all the tiny little uh, highways which deliver nutrients and oxygen to all of our cells all across our body. So right here we have a beautiful photo of a healthy human heart. Um, if you had a cardiovascular disease, it would not look this amazing. Um, it very well might be packed up with fat and excessive cholesterol of the bad kind. Um, so we'll get into that a little bit more. Here is a lovely diagram showcasing the entire cardiovascular system uh, as we know it. So giving you some real life statistics regarding cardiovascular disease. Every 36 seconds, an American dies due to cardiovascular disease. So we can already see I've been making this video for almost two minutes now. That means almost four or five Americans have died due to this horrible cause uh, since we've started. So, if you can imagine, one in every four people who die within the United States um, is due to this in incredibly uh, preventable disease. So, with the knowledge that we're providing today, we're going to hope to lower this number to be, you know, maybe 1 in 10 or 1 in 20 would be a great reduction in the death rate. So when we're discussing uh, who is more susceptible and who needs to be more aware of their health uh, status to prevent cardiovascular disease, some populations are at much greater risk than others. So including uh, men and African Americans, we also notice that those from Southern Asian countries have a higher predisposition to developing these kind of illnesses. So another thing which we need to be aware of is our family history. Is there diabetes in your family? Um, have your parents or grandparents had heart attacks? This is all things to be aware of, as well as our age. Generally, as our age increases, so will our risk for developing cardiovascular diseases. So some things which are within our control and we do have influence over to help avoid these diseases include what we eat and what we do every day. What we're putting in and what we're putting out goes a long way. So we'll want to avoid smoking and using tobacco of any kind. We'll want to avoid drinking any alcohol, avoid consuming excessive salt, excessive sugar. We'll also want to keep an eye on our blood pressure, our cholesterol level, and another really important factor which is within our control is knowledge. If we don't understand how to better take care of ourselves, then we would be unaware we are running ourselves into the grave. So here I have a lovely diagram uh, just making us more aware of the warning signs which often accompany a heart attack. So that would include a sudden dizziness or nausea feeling, possibly even vomiting, unusual tiredness, feeling heartburn in the center of our chest, developing a cold sweat, shortness of breath, or even discomfort in our upper extremities, including the shoulders, arms, neck, and head. 
Furthermore, other warning signs of cardiovascular diseases could exhibit themselves in restlessness, confusion, changes in our sleep pattern, a fast heartbeat, which is considered 100 plus beats per minute, or a constant dizzy and lightheaded feeling. So if you are experiencing any of these warning signs, do reach out to your general practitioner um, and consult your doctor regarding where you're at with your cholesterol and blood pressure to see how at risk you actually are. Now we do need to be well aware that although each type of cardiovascular disease typically has different symptoms, many have these similar warning signs. So from these warning signs, we can stop a lot. Here I have a lovely diagram exhibiting the different types of heart disease. Some of the more common ones including aneurysm, cardiac arrhythmia, coronary artery disease, and heart failure. So cardiac arrhythmia is something which a lot of people in my family have, my grandmother, and I personally have experienced a skip in beat from time to time or an irregularity in rhythm. Now this was due to stress in high school a couple years ago. Since then I have been taking a lot of preventative measures to manage my stress levels. Another wonderful diagram demonstrating the difference between a healthy and an obese heart from the inside and the outside. We can see there's a lot of uh, fat unhealthy fat that's blocking up the vessel walls and coating the outside of the heart itself, restricting its ability to function properly. Did you know that 80 to 90% of all cardiovascular diseases are preventable? Isn't that amazing news? With so many people who fall victim to it every single year, we have power in knowing that the majority of them can be prevented entirely. So how exactly can we prevent them from happening to us? One thing which I had just recently mentioned is managing stress. A great way to do that is through exercise and meditation, physical activity, getting the good positive endorphins going. We also want to avoid using any tobacco or alcohol to manage our stress as that will only add to the uh, risk factors. Um, below that, maintaining a healthy weight also goes hand in hand with regular physical activity and conducting regular health screenings with your uh, care provider, with your doctor, whoever you go to see, uh, just check in every now and then and see how your heart health is doing. Regularly getting a good night's rest allows your body to repair and replenish and revamp itself, getting ready for the next day instead of constantly running on empty, constantly in a state of stress and fatigue. We must make sure to emphasize rest. It's so important, guys. And another really important factor, perhaps the most besides physical activity, is eating a heart-healthy diet. What is a heart-healthy diet? This would include lots of fresh, nutrient-rich vegetables and fruits. Of course, we want to avoid unsaturated, or I'm sorry, we want to avoid the saturated fats, avoid the salt and the sugar in excessive amounts, and we're looking to eat more low-fat or fat-free dairy foods, eating more avocado and olive oil, which are healthy fats, and more whole grains, more lean meats and fish. That is what we want for a heart-healthy diet. Here I have another diagram with prevention tips, including don't smoke, eat healthy, stay active, stay at a healthy weight, manage stress, and control your blood pressure. If your blood pressure is 140 over 90 
or above, you should talk to your doctor about lifestyle changes. We don't want to put ourselves at risk when we can help it. Now look at this big scary number guys, $219 billion? Holy guacamole, that is the amount that the United States were costed due to heart disease alone from 2014 to 2015. So in one year, that is the annual cost of healthcare services, medicine, and lost productivity due to death directly related to heart disease. Unbelievable. I was so shocked. And so with all this information, I have confidence that together we can work to create a more healthy country and environment and help the ones we love, helping ourselves at the same, at the same time. <laughs> Stay healthy, everyone. Have a blessed 2020 and rest of your lifetime. Thank you for listening. And there's my sources. Bye everyone. Thanks for watching.